Luke's Dessert Stories. Hardtack. Hi, everyone. Luke here. Time for another dessert story. If you've never heard of hardtack before, it's also called survival bread. It's like a cracker. But where does hardtack come from and who invented it first? The ancient Egyptians ate something called dora, a crunchy, dry snack made of flour or millet. It was useful on long ocean trips because it would keep for a long time. Eventually, this useful food was brought over to Rome. There, they made it with water, salt, and flour and kneaded the dough. Then, they baked it twice at a low temperature so it would lose its moisture and, ta-da, a dry cracker. It was called buccellum and it was hard and tasteless and, frankly, not that tasty. Soldiers ate it. In the 15th century, people traveled a lot more by boat. So they needed food that would last the whole trip. That's when they made ship biscuits. Ship biscuits were baked four times so they would last even longer. But as a result, they were extra hard and crunchy, so much that they could break your teeth. I am so hungry. Check the kitchen deck. I'm sure there's something there. Uh, guess it's the only thing left. Well, that's a bummer. Here. Sailors had to break the biscuits with rocks and axes just to eat them. That's one tough cookie. British naval officers used to soak them in water or boil them like oatmeal just to make them edible. Hey, did you hear? James got some by his girlfriend. <laughs> it was bound to end. Hey, are you talking about me? Get real, man. <laughs> Vanessa was way out of your league. <laughs> Whoa, you okay, bro? Yeesh. Sometimes, naval officers would even die if they got hit by a rogue biscuit during chow time. So the British Navy had to make a new rule that you couldn't throw your biscuits at others. Hardtacks were given other nicknames like Tooth Destroyer, Iron Plate Cracker, and Delightful Edible Block of Cement. In the 19th century, Western culture was introduced to Japan. With it, they brought this mysterious new snack, the notorious Ship Biscuits. But because they were so big, they decided to start making them into bite-sized pieces instead. They called it Gong Pao, or dried bread. It combined the Chinese word for dry and the Portuguese word for bread, pao. Hardtack has been eaten around the world for thousands of years, but they've always lacked flavor. 100 years ago, 200 years, 1,000 years, even 2,000 years ago. That's a long time with no flavor. Well, that's all for today's dessert story time. Thanks for listening. See you next time, everyone. Luke's Dessert Stories. Chocolate. Hi, everyone. And time for a new dessert story. Guess what? Are you a fan of chocolate? When you eat a yummy piece of chocolate, it can bring a lot of happy memories along with the delicious taste. Chocolate has been loved by people all over the world for a long time, but it wasn't always sweet. In fact, many years ago, it used to be a bitter, spicy drink. Weird, huh? Chocolate comes from the bitter beans of a tree called a cacao tree. In the ancient Mayan and Aztec civilizations, they roasted the cacao beans with spicy peppers. It was drank as a tea and medicine. But I'll tell you how that chocolate became the tasty treat we know today. So listen good. <laughs> in Spain in the 1400s, there were two explorers named Tulio and Miguel. Somehow, oh. these two guys heard there was a lot of gold to be found in the Aztec Empire. So they sailed off to the Americas to try and get their hands on some gold. Oh. So this is the Aztec Empire we heard about. There's a lot of goddess, Tulio. Let's sneak in at night. So they waited until nightfall to get in. After dark, they climbed the palace walls and broke in unannounced. Tulio and Miguel searched up and down the palace trying to find gold. Eventually, they came upon the Aztec king and his servants drinking a black liquid out of golden chalices. Mm, this cacao drink sure is a great pick-me-up after a long day of being king and stuff. It sure is, sir. Our most valuable drink. Hey, look. That looks like it's made of gold. I'll bet that their other kitchen stuff is gold, too. Let's go check it out. So Tulio and Miguel uh -huh. continued their sneaky break into the kitchen in search of gold. They looked all around the place and found a big chest. I bet these things <laughs> filled to the brim with golden chalices. Let's take it back to Spain with us so we can be super rich. Who are you? 
the jig is up. Let's get out of here. <laughs> the two thieves ran away with the chest and casually slipped out the palace. They barely made it out in one piece. They opened the box with great anticipation. But there wasn't any gold. It was a strange fruit they'd never seen before. There isn't any gold in there. All that work for nothing. Everything in this chest looks completely useless. The two took the box of cacao fruits and sold it to an invader named Columbus who was busy wreaking havoc in the Bahamas. Then that guy went back to Spain and gave the fruits to Queen Isabel, who was just mm -hmm. as confused as he was. The cacao was oh, bitter and spicy, so the people did not like it very much. But in the 17th century, they mixed it with milk and sugar. Genius! Finally, the Europeans started to like it. And that became the chocolate we know and love today. Tulio and Miguel actually found something much more valuable than gold, but in proper colonial fashion had no idea what they were doing. That's why they got such a raw deal when they sold it off. And today, chocolate is one of the most beloved food items all over the world. Delicious and versatile. Well, guess that's it for today's dessert story. Thanks for watching. See you all next time. Wilkes Dessert Stories. Tiramisu. Hi, everyone. Wilk here. Welcome to my dessert tales. Everyone knows that sweets can fill us with happiness, but happiness is guaranteed if you're a fan of this particular treat. This dessert can woo even the grumpiest of old hearts, like Master Bread. <laughs> That's right, it's tiramisu. So now we'll learn the history of this creamy treat. Tiramisu was invented in the 1970s by an Italian couple named Campeole. They were so happy when they had a new tiny family member. But their joy was short-lived. Mrs. Campaioli got sick soon after. Luckily, her husband took great care of her. And hooray! She eventually got better. Honey! Sadly, she was still weak and would fall or drop things from time to time. When the husband's mother heard of her illness, she was worried and came to the house to help. She cooked lots of yummy things for the new mother to enjoy. But Mrs. Campioli didn't have much of an appetite. What should we do? My poor daughter-in-law won't eat a thing these days. Ah, I'll create something new by mixing all her favorite ingredients together. So she started with some custard cream. Added some mascarpone cheese that was her favorite and topped it all off with coffee to give her energy. At first, the poor new mama didn't feel like eating it and said no. But after one bite, she realized how amazing it was and scarfed down the whole thing. Good heavens, this dish is incredible! Oh my, well I'm tickled pink that you like it. With this new tasty treat from her mother-in-law, Mrs. Campaioli eventually Aha! regained her strength. She made a full recovery and started to work again in her husband's restaurant as a cook. Even after her mother-in-law went back home, she would continue to make the new dessert and eat it for mm -hmm. herself. Hey, what's that thing? Customers began to wonder what this tasty-looking treat was. This? It's something my mother-in-law invented when I was ill to help me. Um, wow, this is amazing. You guys should add this to the menu. Customers started to suggest they add it to the menu, so they did! They dubbed their new dessert tiramisu, and the rest is history. Now people everywhere love tiramisu! Tiramisu is an Italian word. It combines tirare, which means push, me, which you guessed it, me, and su, or up. Push me up. So in other words, it's pick-me-up. So it's a pick-me-up. The name lets us remember how it saved a new mother and gave her the energy to get back up and at them with cream and cheese and coffee. Well, that's it for today's dessert story. Thanks for watching. See you all next time. Luke's Dessert Stories. Macarons. Hi, guys. Luke here. It's dessert story time. Question. Do you know who the biggest pop icon in Bakery Town is right now? Yep, that's right, guys. It's Macaron. 
A macaron is like a soft, pretty colored cookie filled with cream. French aristocrats used to love them. Today, we're gonna learn how the macaron was invented. Catherine de' Medici was an Italian aristocrat who moved from Italy to France to marry King Henry II. But more importantly, she was a big foodie and a major fan of sweet treats. Right there with you, Catherine. Today, we think of French food as fancy, huh? but back then it was huh? not quite there yet. What on earth is this? Don't you guys have any dessert or? Um, um, um. Who's dessert? Do I know him? Is it a food? Have you heard of this dessert? I admit I have not, sir. <laughs> so the poor lady had to go without her favorite sweet treats. Living in a whole new country was hard enough, but without her favorite foods, she was in an extra sad situation. I'm not used to all these strange foods. I miss all my favorite desserts. Woe is me, I'm hungry! <laughs> hmm. Poor Catherine even became ill. King Henry II was worried about his wife. My queen, you must eat something. No, I'd rather not. I miss Italy. <laughs> She was the saddest kind of sick. Homesick. My heart breaks to see my beloved wife suffer so. Whatever shall I do? King Henry mm. thought for a long time about how he could cure his wife's homesickness. Mm. Aha! Finally, he came up with a plan. My wife loves sweet things. And on her birthday, King Henry brought her a gift. It was a chef from Italy who made her macarons. I'll use the whites of the egg to make meringue. Then mix it in with some almond powder. Make those into little circles. Stick that in the oven. Some cream in the middle and make a little sandwich. These macarons are as sweet and beautiful as the queen herself. <gasps> Catherine gobbled up the macarons and was as happy as a clam again. And Catherine and the king lived happily ever after. <laughs> Now every time you eat a macaron, you can think of the love King Henry had for his wife. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's dessert story. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye, everyone. Wilkes Dessert Stories. Ice cream. Hi there. Welcome to Wilkes Dessert Story. Tell me, what dessert do you crave most on a hot summer's day? Hmm, you may think of several. But for me, the answer is always ice cream. So have you ever wondered how this cold, creamy concoction was created? Mmm. Today, I will tell you the story of ice cream. <laughs> the very first ice cream was made in China. 3,000 years ago, Chinese people made a special dessert by adding spices and fruits to cold, shaved ice. But this dessert was closer to a sorbet than an ice cream. The dessert was carried by Arab merchants who traveled to ancient Persia. It continued to spread to nearby countries, Greece and Rome. It is said that Greece's Alexander the Great and Roman Emperor Nero enjoyed mixing honey and fruits with snow brought from the Alps. In the 13th century Chinese Yuan Dynasty, ice cream made from ice and milk made its first appearance. During this time, the famous explorer Marco Polo was in China. Huh? He saw people eating a food he'd never seen before. What is that? Ah, it's a popular snack these days in our Yuan Dynasty. It's cooling and delicious. Lately, it's all I eat. <laughs> Could I try a little bite? Of course you can. Ah, mm. delicioso. The cold, creamy sweetness of it melts in my mouth. I feel like I'm running through a field of pure white snow that's a dripping with honey. How do you make this a magic treat? First, you start by grinding the ice. Then you add some fruits and spices and top it off with milk. Marco Polo brought the ice cream recipe back to Italy with him. And that ice cream recipe that he carried from China was in turn brought to France by the Italian princess Catherine de' Medici when she married King Henry II. Ice cream was spread all across Europe, and it also crossed the sea to get to England. There, it reached the hands of Gerald Tassane, the royal chef of King Charles. That's when it became the ice cream we know today. The first published ice cream recipe was in Aunt Mary Eels' cookbook in 1718 England. In 1744, the word ice cream was listed in the Oxford English Dictionary for the first time. 
But because ice cream melted so easily, <laughs> it was a dessert that only the very wealthy could enjoy. <sighs> hmm, might there be a way for everyone to be able to enjoy ice cream? Extra, extra! Jacob hmm. Perkins has invented the refrigerator! Huh? Then one day, Jacob Fussell read an article about the invention of the refrigerator. That's it. I can keep the ice cream cold in the refrigerator. This way, I'll be able to sell ice cream to a lot of people. Once Jacob Fussell came up with the idea to store ice cream in the refrigerator, he built an ice cream factory. Jacob Fussell's ice cream spread all across the world. That's how all of us got to enjoy delicious, cool ice cream in the hot summertime. Ice cream has a history dating back from ancient China to the present. It was created and developed thanks to the efforts of many people. How about we all enjoy some ice cream today and remember all those people's hard work? Well, that's the end of today's dessert story. See you next time! Wilkes Dessert Stories Pretzel Hello there! It's time for Wilkes Dessert Story. In this episode, we saw the brave heroics of Patrol Pretzel. So friends, let's learn the origin story of the pretzel. The pretzel was first created in a German monastery in the seventh century. The monk in the monastery had a huge problem on his hands. The children wouldn't memorize church prayers and were often very rowdy during sermons. Look, kids, if you refuse to memorize your prayers now, you won't go to heaven later! Huh. <laughs> Learning prayers isn't any fun. That's right. Saying our prayers won't fill our bellies with bread or meat. Bread or meat? I'm so hungry, I can't <laughs> even get the words out. I'd rather find something to eat now than go to heaven. Get out of here, you ungrateful brats! The fuming monk stomped and stamped around the monastery to calm himself down. Little brats, all they do is whine, whine, whine. I've done uh -huh. it! <laughs> I made some bread out of oh, dirt. Looks tasty. <laughs> oh, I'm so hungry. Maybe this loaf of dirt will fill our empty bellies. <laughs> the monk witnessed the children eat dirt bread because they were so hungry and desperate. Back then, many people in Europe starved to death simply because there wasn't enough food to go around. Children, <gasps> don't eat that dirt loaf! Come on now, spit it out! <laughs> you can't eat just anything because you're hungry. But my <laughs> stomach hurts so bad. What he said! Do you want us to starve to death? Oh. The monk was thunderstruck by what the children told him. There must be a way. That's it! I think it's wrong to force the children to memorize their prayers when they're starving. We need some kind of reward to help them want to learn their prayers. And so, I propose giving them some bread if they commit each prayer to memory. What a great idea! I think it's splendid. I quite agree. I volunteer to make the bread. <clears throat> the monks all decided to give the children bread if they can memorize each one of their prayers. <laughs> <laughs> they shaped the bread to look just like hands at prayer. And that's how the pretzel was created. The name pretzel comes from the Latin word brachiatellum, meaning little praying arm. Children, attention, I have an announcement. <laughs> I will give this special bread to anyone who memorizes their prayers. Special bread? <gasps> wow, looks tasty. Me, oh, me, me. I'll I'll take it all my all of the children learned all of the prayers. <gasps> wow, uh -huh. thank you! Thanks so much! And they all ate delicious pretzels together. In the end, the monk was both happy and relieved that the children learned their prayers and didn't go hungry after all. This is the origin story behind the pretzel we enjoy today. Wasn't it something special? When you try to understand where someone's coming from, instead of getting upset with them, things turn out better for everyone. And don't forget, if you work together, you can make something special that stands the test of time. Well, that's all for today's special dessert story. See you next time! Wilkes Dessert Stories Halloween! Hi everyone, Wilk here. It's dessert story time! 
Trick or treat! I hope it's a treat! <laughs> hey! Do you know about the holiday where you go around asking different people to give you treats? That's right! It's time for Halloween! Today, I'll tell you the story of how Halloween started. Halloween comes from a festival <laughs> called Samhain, the New Year celebration of the ancient Celtic people. For them, the New Year started November 1st, or the beginning of winter. But they believed that on October 31st, the day before, the souls of the dead would come Where to the is? human world. Why do I have to wear this? It's gross. I think mine is chic. It's not supposed to be chic. Tonight, the souls of the dead return to the human world. These disguises are for your own protection. So they wore ghost costumes or the hides of animals. In 1840, a terrible famine swept across Ireland. Millions of Irish people immigrated to America to try and survive. There's like a weird uh, vibe tonight. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Huh? Did you hear someone behind us? I didn't hear anything. <gasps> no, there's definitely something. <gasps> Why? What's the... Ah! Uh, go away! Go away! <laughs> Are you okay? <gasps> oh, I didn't really mean to scare you guys. That's my bad. <laughs> uh, well, you did. Hey, kid, why are you wearing this thing running around town anyway? Ah, well, it's a tradition for my people. Every year on October 31st, me and my family put on ghost costumes. We do it to trick the spirits of the dead. Tricking the spirits of the dead? Hey, that sounds kind of fun. Let's yeah. do it! So America embraced Halloween in a big way. They started wearing costumes, too, and lots of other cultures in America started doing it for fun. What started as wearing animal hides for protection became wearing spooky outfits or even fun outfits. And the practice of giving food to the poor during the Middle Ages became the new tradition of giving candy to kids. Trick or treat! This ancient tradition of warding off spirits became a beloved worldwide holiday. Isn't it fun? It's a great time to dress up and walk around town and ask for lots of candy. But try not to make too much mischief. Well, that's it for today's dessert story. Thanks for listening. See you all next time. Wilkes Dessert Stories. Butter. Hi, everybody. Wilk here. Time for a dessert story. Question, what's yellow, soft, and tastes great spread on toast? That's right, butter. But here's a fun fact. Butter started out with a different use. In ancient times, butter was used more like a lotion than a condiment. So today, let's learn about where butter came from. The year was 3000 BCE, or something like that. And in Babylonia, there lived a young boy. Back then, going to fight in a war was the highest honor among men. It was the cool thing to do. But the boy wasn't particularly strong or coordinated. He got teased a lot by the other kids. Hey kid, you can't be a soldier with two left feet. Please, he'd never even make it onto the battlefield anyway. At the time, Babylonia was at war with other countries nearby, so they were recruiting new soldiers. The boy wanted to be a soldier too, so he applied for enlistment. Hmm. Nice try, kid, but you're a little too small to fight. Head on back home. Sadly, he was not accepted. All the other men in the village, except him, got to enlist, and they marched off to war. Ah, uh, I'm too weak, so they wouldn't even let me train with them. I'm so bummed out. Huh? Hey, that's it. I can train myself and get stronger. He hung a bag filled with milk from a tree. Every day, he trained by hitting the bag of milk. It took a long time, but eventually he became super strong. One day, while he was training, he saw the soldiers from his village returning from the faraway battlefields, looking war-torn. What mm -hmm. happened? Well, we lost the war. Oh. All we have to show for it are our scars. Oh. He was so upset that the war ended before he could even oh. fight in it. Stupid war ending. What about all that awesome training I did? He threw a stick and it struck the leather bag, oh. making it spill out all over the place. Wait. What's this? <laughs> hey, this stuff smells great. Out of curiosity, he put it on some of his scars he'd gotten while training. Wow, my hand is healing faster. 
By accident, the boy had discovered oh. butter. <laughs> when he was hitting the bag every day, it ended up separating the whey from the fat. And the fatty part underneath was what we know today as butter. The boy shared the butter with the soldiers to help heal their wounds. Rad, I'm healing so much faster. And it smells good too. Can I get more of that chunky milk stuff? Yeah, I'll pay you for it. So the boy made more and more butter, selling it to anyone who needed it. He made lots of money and a delicious food too. Even though he didn't get to be a soldier, he invented wonderful butter. So even if your dreams don't end up coming true, it might lead to something better. Or should I say, might lead to something butter. I can't help it. Puns just butter me up. Well, that's it for today's dessert story. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye, everyone. Wilk's Dessert Stories. Milk. Hi there. Welcome to Wilk's Dessert Story. Believe it or not, today's story is all about me, Milk. There are all kinds of milk containers, such as glass bottles, plastic containers, and paper cartons. I bet you are wondering how milk cartons like me were created, right? So today, we're going to learn about the history of the milk carton. Milk was originally sold in glass bottles. But those bottles were expensive, heavy, and fragile. So maybe they weren't the best option. Happily, a paper milk carton was invented in the United States in 1915. Its inventor was a man named John Van Wormer, who owned a toy company. One morning, Wormer left the house in a big hurry because he was late for work. Mm -hmm. Honey, wait. You can't start the day without your breakfast milk. Oh, thank you, Muffin. <laughs> <laughs> Wormer accidentally dropped the bottle and milk splashed all over his nice clothes. Oh, my. What will we do? I'm already late. I should just go. Ugh. Oh, do you smell Is that? Is that milk on him? <laughs> Mommy, look! It's a milking cow! Hush now, dear. Mm. I call this meeting to order. Mm. I smell something rotten in here. I can hardly breathe. Mm. The rancid milk ruined my perfect day. Mm. Who is it? Sir, I need your signature on these papers. Just leave them and go. Mm? Yes, I've got it! Wormer got a brilliant idea after seeing those paper documents. He decided to create a new container for milk. Uh, it's finally complete, my masterpiece. Wormer invented and patented the milk carton. And incredibly, milk cartons became popular all over the world. Thanks to Wormer, all of us can enjoy drinking milk from a light, inexpensive and safe container. What do you think? Isn't the story of how milk cartons came to be fun and interesting? Maybe the next time you encounter a problem, you'll think of a fun way to solve it just like Wormer did. Well, that's all for today's dessert story. See you next time. Wilk's Dessert Stories. Tayaki. Hi there. Welcome to Wilk's Dessert Story. Every culture has snack foods that they love to eat in the winter time. Hotok, steam buns, sweet potatoes, fish cakes, and too many others to name. But today, we'll learn about the fish-shaped snack, taiyaki. At the end of the 19th century, Japan started to adopt some of Western culture. A lot of Western food was introduced to Japan, but the Japanese people particularly loved waffles. A man named Kiyojiro Kobe owned a pastry shop in Tokyo, and he had a big problem. With all these waffle shops popping up around him, his business was suffering. <sighs> My pastries don't stand a chance with these waffles. Maybe I should sell waffles too. And that's just what he did. Kobe would sell waffles to save his shop. Uh, oh, but now I'm just like them! That's right. He was just one of many waffle shops with nothing to distinguish his treats. I have to think of something. Hmm? That's it. I can stuff the waffles with red beans. They'll love it. If I pour the dough in the waffle maker, add the bean paste, then cover it, ah, then I'm just going to make a gigantic mess. Kobe was thinking about how he could make the bean paste stay inside the dough uh -huh. when he saw a crowd gathered in front of a fish market. 
Step right up. I have here a sea bream caught fresh this morning. Wow, oh. sea bream. I sure wish I could taste it. Today, this priceless fish sells at a low, low price. Mm. I'll take three of them. I'll that. take four. Oh, Ten thousand people flocked to the shop to buy the sea bream. Sea bream was a very popular fish in Japan. They even called it the king of fish. Huh? Ah. Kobe saw everyone fighting over the sea bream and it gave him a great idea. Kobe ordered an iron plate shaped like a sea bream. He poured the batter into the mold, added the bean paste, and topped it off with batter. He had created a sea bream shaped waffle stuffed with bean paste. Kobe named the waffle Taiyaki, or sea bream bread, and started to sell it at his shop. Hey, step right up for sea bream bread. It's cheaper than sea bream and it's tastier too. Oh, oh, here. Here. Kobe's bread quickly caught on. Everybody loved it. Eventually, taiyaki became one of the most popular winter foods in Korea. Well now, did you enjoy the story of the fish-shaped bread? Maybe it will inspire you to dream up your own original ideas and come up with new ways of doing things that no one's ever thought of before. Well, everyone, that's all for today's dessert story. See you next time.